What up everyone, it's your boy xmanny 87 here bringing you another top 10 video and what I have for you today is my top 10 favorite women of Marvel Legends where I'll be ranking my favorite female figures of 2021. Haven't done this since 2019 but unlike last time there will be no restrictions to just comic based figures only. All is fair game so you'll see a mix of movies, animation, comics, etc. For my new viewers and subscribers, just to let you know how I do this, I go off my personal attachments and fun factor of the figures that I acquired within the year. I don't allow ratings from my reviews to affect my rankings, so ratings and pricing is thrown out the window. Of course, I will factor in sculpting, articulation, accessories, etc. to consider one over the other, but ultimately will choose my personal favorites. Before I get into everything, if you could please leave a thumbs up like rating on the video, it'll help show your support for my channel and I greatly appreciate it. No honorable mentions here, we'll just get straight to it. Now with that said, let's get ready to count down! Coming in at the number 10 spot, we have Callisto. I'm sure you expected an X-Men character to make it on my list, and you'll see a few more. Callisto is one of those classic X-Men villains that have been on my radar for the longest. Glad to see her in action figure form finally. Surprised it took this long since we got that Punk Rock Storm back in the 2018 Apocalypse build figure wave that I expected to be reused, and it is, as you see here, and it's perfect for the character's look and physique. I love that we get two brand new sculpted knives as they're her signature weapons. The outdated articulation on the arms does hold her back a bit for a knife throwing slash wielding character. That head sculpt is the money here and makes the figure for me. It would have been higher on my list if it came with an alternate Lila Cheney head. Still, a first time in the line which expands my X-Men allies and rogues gallery in my collection. At number 9 we have Ironheart. So to be honest, I'm not a fan of this character nor do I care for this character as she's so boring to me. But it's not about that. I have to be fair and put that aside and judge the figure solely. Because as a figure, she came out incredible. The work they put into this body frame is stellar, not just sculpt but articulation too. The double jointed pinless elbows and knees helps a ton with dynamic posing. We also get some new twirling smoke effects which I always love seeing new accessories. The head sculpts are beautifully done here. I like the short hairstyle, would be nice to get one with longer hair but that can always be done later. I think her purple armor looks better but I like team building and this is a much needed addition to round out the champions team. I need to get around and taking some pics of her as I had a lot of fun posing this figure. Coming in at the number 8 spot we have Firestar. Talk about team building, it's been a dream of mine to get Angelica Jones to complete my Spider-Man and his amazing friends crew. This is one of those big personal attachments from watching the cartoon as a kid. She always had this nice bright yellow and red costume and it pops here, especially with the orange painted flames in between the colors. We get treated with tons of accessories giving us extra heads, hands, effects, and Aunt May's dog, Miss Lions. Which is another team builder for the Pet Avengers. You can add Firestar to other teams such as the New Warriors or your X-Men displays. I bought two of her for one to display on my Spider-Man shelf and X-Men shelf. Hoping they do her New Warriors look with the jacket. Wish she had double jointed elbows but articulation wise I got to get her into some sexy flight poses as you see here. That fire flight stand that comes with the HasLab Galactus Frankie Ray Nova will certainly look beautiful with this. Glad to finally check this off my Marvel Legends female wish list. At the number 7 spot we have Scarlet Witch. Well if you saw my last top 10 Marvel Legends and other media list then you would know that she would land a spot here. How can it not? She's one of the most beautiful looking female figures they put out. I pretty much said it all in the last video on how much I love this figure so I don't want to waste any more of your time but I think this might be the best looking MCU Legends female figure. When I look at her face it just looks so real like almost Hot Toys lifelike realism. Elizabeth Olsen Scarlet Witch is my favorite female character in the MCU and now my favorite female figure in my MCU collection. Coming in at the number 6 spot we have Lady Deathstrike. Okay, I really love this figure but I'm also torn that she's not higher on my list. I'll explain in a bit. Nothing bad but first I want to say that it's good to finally get a good looking Lady Deathstrike figure because I hated that Toy Biz one. There's some good looking qualities as it's an all new sculpt from scratch like the cybernetic parts and the bare cleavage. Something Toy Biz were afraid to do but Hasbro went there to go for comic accuracy. I always appreciate that. The cybernetic parts on her arms look good too. Majority of the articulation is good. 
The ball jointed waist was a smart move not to break up the aesthetics on her upper torso, but what bothered me most was her hands. I shouldn't have to feel bothered on a character where her hands is her biggest signature look. They look good, but it's the function of that one hand with a vertical hinge. For a character that performs many hand gestures, we should have gotten different stylized hands and a screaming head. We get a pretty looking neutral head, but I needed an angry expression to look like she's ready to claw someone's guts out. I would like to see a more modern looking Lady Deathstrike on the Shriek body one day. Extra heads and hands would have put this over the top. This is definitely a much needed update still, and a major key player for the Reavers team that's building up. Coming in at number 5 is Shadow Cat. Funny how I just finished talking about Lady Deathstrike as this figure reuses those same legs and also has claws. <laughs> but this is a figure that surprised me making it on my list. The face is not all that bad. I think some folks were over exaggerating about her face sculpt. It does look better with the brown eyebrows on the running change. The bluish slash purplish metallic sheen paint deco is nicely done as well as the silver parts. Good accessory choices with alt hands and the pair of retractable and non-retractable claws. She has great replayability and the best fun factor is having her ride on collapse. Giggity. That extra open hand will allow her to grip onto his suspenders and keeping her feet tucked in so she can stay mounted on. Or if you're trying to do the AOA version of the fastball special, either way, they look badass together. Like I said in my review, this body opens the door to get more characters like Deathbird, Lady Mandarin, Lady Mastermind, Belladonna, etc. that have yet to debut for the Legends line. This is a solid figure overall that I didn't expect to have this much fun with. <laughs> As we are now in the final four stretch, coming in at the number four spot is Omega Sentinel. With a Sentinel heavy year, it made sense for this figure to be released in 2021. This figure is awesome and another new sculpt from scratch and it shows with those intricate details and line work on her body. She's a lot more poseable than I thought she would be. I can get her in an arms crossing pose fairly easy. Her arms are the highlight here as they are swappable to display her weaponry limbs, which looks incredible on her. Her classic looking alt head with the mask and hair looks great. Even though the hair is not the right color, the sculpt still came out brilliant. But this House of X head sculpt on is my go-to for display. She was much needed to lead my Sentinel army. A dope looking figure all around, so she's pretty high on my list. Coming in at number 3, we have Captain Carter. Another one to make it on my list from my last video. So you already know my thoughts on it, but when you put her up against all the other female figures, she really stands out on her own, even with the likes of taller females, such as She-Hulk, Proxima Midnight, Hela, Angela, etc. And that's what I love about this figure. Since she lacked accessories, having her ride on the stomper is where the fun's at. <laughs> Quite a few girls riding dudes on this list. <laughs> it's like Hasbro said, sorry, no rider series this year, but here's some girls to ride you dudes. <laughs> Again, a standout character, not just in figure form, but also standing out in the Marvel Universe. She took the Marvel fandom by storm and got some hot cosplayers out of that. <laughs> Joking aside, with her unique sculpting, she stands as one of the best Legends female figures ever made. <laughs> Coming in at number 2 is Shriek. Hot off reviewing her just a few weeks ago, I already knew she was going to make it in the top 3 of my list. This is the figure to begin a new era for the Marvel Legends female comic based figures. We get a brand new mold for the shorter adult females with double jointed pinless elbows and knees, so I expect to see a lot more on this mold. Black Widow would be a perfect candidate. I mean, you can name a slew of characters. That's why this figure is so damn important and why it's so damn high on my list. As much as I appreciate all the extra hands she comes with, the gripping hands were useless and needed an extra head or a new blast effect. But other than that, her paint job is super solid on her body and face, the head sculpt is so good and we are now two figures away from completing the Carnage family. Again, team building is my thing. <laughs> And my number one pick goes to Tigra. Tigra has always been one of my favorite female Avengers, mainly because I'm a big fan of the West Coast Avengers and her being an original founding member was a must have for me. Those were some good runs. She sticks out the best to me for a number of reasons. The update destroys the last one by a landslide. They weren't afraid to go with the classic half-naked look either, so her cleavage is bare. You know, there's some comments I read about, oh, Disney won't allow Hasbro to do characters like White Queen, Lady Deathstrike, and Classic Tigra since they can't show cleavage. Well, three things I have to say about that. One, BS, as these characters are done now. <laughs> Two, 
They did Sugar Man, who was a freaking child molester, which is like the worst crime to commit other than murder, which is why I despise that character so damn much. After they've done Sugar Man, I'm convinced they could do anyone and anything. And number three, Zombie Cap had a lot of blood and gore. So my point is, there really doesn't seem to be huge restrictions with looks and character traits. Marvel is still calling the shots on their merchandise and have given Hasbro a good amount of liberty. With this look, we get an all new body mold from scratch. I love how they complemented the double jointed pinless elbows and knees with sculpting her fur around it, the fur sculpting on other areas as well. The tail came out acceptable as it rotates. Wish it was a ball joint to get more posing out of it, but this will definitely pave the way for us to finally get a feral and a proper Wolfsbane figure. On top of that, the articulation is very solid and I got to get her into a ton of cool poses. The bright orange skin tone doesn't bother me as I've seen it be this vibrant before in some comic issues. I'm sure they'll do a repaint in a light yellow color like their first figure. The paint job came out superb with her tiger stripes. Just needed her fingernails and toenails painted in black. Something about feline characters that always come out looking hot. Oh, and here's some more cosplay. Giggity giggity. Gaga goo. This feline fury also comes with an extra head and hands for more display options and playability. You have lots of options on where to display her. You can put her on several shelves with the Avengers, West Coast Avengers, A-Force, Fantastic Four, even Spider-Man allies as she's battled Kraven in the past. So you have some good flexibility with her. She's just so nice I had to buy her twice. One for my Avengers display and the other for my A-Force. I could go on and on talking about how much I love this figure, but this female fury sits on the throne as the queen of Marvel Legends female figures in 2021. Alright, and now to wrap things up, this has been the best year of female Marvel Legends when it comes to introducing newer modes and seeing more double-jointed elbows to get closer for it to be the norm. It's refreshing as for a while it felt like the same scrawny bodies reused over and over again with rarely something different in between. If there's one feature or two I'd wish to see newly introduced for the female molds in the coming year or so is some butterfly joints and double diaphragm joints like how we see in the Power Rangers, G.I. Joe, and Fortnite lines for their female bodies. This will help a ton for Spider-Verse characters like a new Spider-Gwen. Maybe some drop-down hips too. They can take the women of Marvel Legends to the next level with that. Now I kick it back to you. Which ones do you have and are happy about that made it on my list? What are some new features you'd like to see brought to the women of Marvel Legends? What female characters would you like to see made next? Comment below, let me know, we'll chat about it. That was my top 10 women of Marvel Legends list of 2021. Please follow me on Instagram if you haven't already, link is in the description below. Hit the notification bell so you always know when my latest videos are up. Share and subscribe if you're new. See you on the next video. Peace, peace.